Hey designers, welcome back to the studio. Today we're actually going to start our project um, where we're working with lines and um, we're going to try our best to kind of just work exclusively with lines and get us to think about lines. Um, so when a designer kind of considers these things, uh, lines can exist sort of on a two-dimensional surface but just kind of pay attention to the way maybe the space around me is broken up, right, and, and how um, I maybe have used lines to sort of compose the frame, uh, arranging it with the line of the shelf and um, the way the designer might consider um, the way a line moves through the frame. A three-dimensional designer or a sculptor, right, would consider a line that actually travels through space. Um, lines can become really interesting ways to guide a viewer uh, around the space. Um, but if that sounds a little bit too simplistic for you, or you're just kind of having a hard time wrapping your head around it, let's actually do something before we get into our project to kind of loosen up our hands, to free up our brains from thinking too logically, and just kind of start to flow um, some of that line work right onto the page. So oftentimes when I um, roll into the studio, I've just come from outside or I've come from another class um, or I've just come from work and my mind is just not in the right place for the kind of thinking that needs to happen in a studio. Um, so uh, what we'll do, what we'll kind of get in the habit of doing are these um, generative exercises where um, we'll really just start with a blank page in our sketchbook and uh, use kind of... Um, use the kind of uh, building block pieces of our project um, to, uh, to just kind of loosen up. I'm going to use a big black marker for this project so that you guys can see it in the video. Um, but I recommend for you guys uh, to use one of your um, pens. This is going to stop you from obsessing over uh, trying to erase the lines. I want the ink to flow quickly and kind of be committed to the page. Um, the two pens, as a quick reminder that we've got, are the rollerball and the felt tip pen. Either one would work just fine. Um, the way I want you guys to think about this first page is to work with line and only line and to work with basic three line compositions. Let me give you an example and um, it'll be about a five minute long project or so uh, to slowly fill the page with these compositions. These exercises I'll just kind of loosely refer to as our fill a page projects and um, in terms of like what you get out of them don't get too caught up in the idea that you don't like what you see in fact what you see is almost not at all um, the purpose of them it's less about what these designs actually end up looking like and it's more about um, you know what your mind is doing as you work through the process of rendering these things out. I fully, um, I fully anticipate probably just getting rid of most of these or just kind of completely forgetting that as a design I ever came, uh, I ever had any interest in these. Um, they're not oftentimes all that interesting of a design. Now, occasionally I may come back to something like this and maybe rework them slightly because there was a maybe a hint of, uh, of an interesting design embedded in here. Um, but it's mostly about loosening up your hands. It's mostly about loosening up your mind and um, releasing some of the kind of stressful thoughts that you've got and the kind of literal thoughts you're bringing to the class and allowing the kind of uh, the sound of the marker, the feel of the felt on the page, the roll of the graphite over the texture, and the kind of um, positioning of those lines to really start to occupy your mind. As a designer, that's where I want your mind to be as we begin our next project. So let's turn over to one of the next blank pages and we'll get it set up with our first uh, formal project in the semester. 
What you'll need to get this going uh, is a full blank page. Uh, in case some of your drawings bled through on the back side, uh, don't use the back side of that page. We'll start on a fresh page. Uh, we will need the little blue piece of tape that you should have stuck down to your uh, cutting board. And you'll need the two strips of cardboard that you got in class. Uh, if you forgot to pick these up, uh, or you didn't happen to grab them the day that you were in school, uh, don't worry. My guess is that uh, you've got some food packaging sitting around at home, and the cardboard that this stuff is made out of would make uh, really excellent cardboard strips. Open up that package. And we'll use your X-Acto blade uh, to sort of slice up two thin strips. Don't forget to use your cutting mat underneath. That way you don't accidentally slice up the tabletop that you're working on. And it's probably a good idea, instead of trying to Superman cut in one hard stroke, to do two or three passes right along the edge of your straight edge. And I want my lines, my final cut lines, to be relatively straight. So when it gets down to actually cutting out my, my lines here, I'll use the grid on my cutting board to line up my cuts. About an inch wide strip is plenty. So now I'm actually into my final cuts here. Two. Uh, so if you happen not to grab them from school, these will work just fine. So back in the sketchbook, Let's actually get set up to make this drawing. Let's take your first two cardboard strips and we're going to orient them on your page, sort of landscape style. That means we're going to make a few drawings sort of left to right. So let's start right smack dab in the middle and you're going to create a, sort of a, um, a doorway with a couple of uh, what we'll call masks on either side. These cardboard strips will fold back along these tape hinges. So let's pull off a couple of pieces of this tape. You really don't need too much of it. One little strip. On the outside of this piece. And a little strip on the outside of this piece. Now, the reason we're using this blue painter's tape is because um, as we kind of continue to work on our piece of paper here, the low tack, or the kind of low adhesive of this blue tape as we peel it off the paper, won't damage the surface of our drawing. So now we'll need a couple of pencils. In your art kit, you've got three pencils, and your pencils have uh, three different hardnesses, or you can think of it as three different uh, darknesses, a 4B, an HB, and a 6H. Why don't you hang on to all three of those? Now our drawing is going to happen in between the two edges of our masks here. And let's start with a nice dark line. We'll grab our 4B pencil. And I'm going to lay my straight edge right across these two gateways. And it doesn't really matter what the angle is or you know whether it's a long, sh uh, long line that goes edge to edge or whether it's a real short line. But I want you basically to connect uh, one side of your gateway to the other. And this time I want you to go from the line that you just drew back toward one of the two sides. Okay, and we'll start with one more line, and this one I'll kind of let you put it wherever you'd like. I'm going to connect one more time from the line I just finished to the edge of my drawing. Now these three lines that you start with will become the very beginning of your composition. I'm going to put this back over and now I'm going to use a series of straight parallel lines to fill in these gaps. I'm going to use my HB pencil this time and begin and end with a series of parallel lines that start and stop right on my lines. I come to the edge of my cutting board here on the side, 
all of my lines will stop hard right at the edge of my cardboard, or what we'll call our mask. I'll continue that drawing until the first space is completely filled. Now, a couple things I want you to pay attention to. I've chosen to lay down very, very tight parallel lines, right, so that each one of my lines is so close together that it's almost the same distance apart as the thickness of the line itself. Uh, that's going to create a certain type of, uh, that's going to create a certain feel in your overall drawing, uh, a block or a solid filled space, but a close-up look at it, right, and it's just a series of lines. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that as I flip open my drawing, uh, because all of my lines have ended against my mask, I'm creating sort of the illusion of a line on this right-hand side, even though that line doesn't exist. Try not to kind of start yourself with a line right at the edge of your mask. It's really nice to have all of your lines kind of butting up against the mask and creating the illusion of a line. Uh, but also experiment with the different um, spacing in between your lines and different thickness of lines. If I come back to my 4B pencil uh, for my next drawing, I can lay down thicker lines with larger spaces. These softer pencils will lay down a lot more graphite and they tend to kind of get a little bit messier. Don't fuss over, you know, trying to clean this thing up with an eraser. Uh, it's not worth it. The, the direction this project is going won't require such a super squeaky clean drawing on the inside. Uh, but if I lay down two lines right next to each other, I can get these nice thick lines with the 4B pencil. And the 4B has a real soft lead, a real soft graphite in it. So if I kind of come back in and maybe lay a couple of thick, heavy lines down real close to each other, uh, it will create the illusion, right, that instead of having a real skinny pencil line or skinny graphite line on the page, I have a real heavy compositional directional. Eventually, we're going to make two or three drawings right next to each other. In order to do that, we'll have to move our gates a couple of times each. So go ahead and complete your first drawing by filling in all of the spaces using lines that are close together, lines that are far apart. We'll come back and kind of talk through how to continue this in the studio with the next tutorial.